Welcome to Lieutenant Eel's Cookbook, a foreword by Dr. Aurora Teal. Our transporter chief, Lieutenant Eel, is one of a kind. His recipes may sound wild, but I have personally tried each and every dish, and I can attest they are very good. Back in the late 1900s and early 2000s of Earth, many of these recipes were shared between families. And while at the Academy, our Mr. Eel became fascinated with the archives he found. He brought many of them to me, asking questions like, what is a chicken? I helped him replicate many of the foods and pointed out the main components, but he wasn't happy with simply replicating a finished dish. He wanted to make it from scratch. He wanted the chance to get it wrong, or very right. This collection of recipes represents some of the most popular on the ship, as well as a few recipes shared from crew members like myself, who have a small amount of cooking or baking ability as well. We were all happy to help Lieutenant Eel with this project, and we hope you enjoy eating like the crew of the Starship Tempest. Introduction Hello all, it's me, Lieutenant Eel of the Starship Tempest. While some of you may be quite shocked at this project, I assure you I did not work on it during my shifts. Much. Okay, that's a lie. I worked on it on some of my shifts. Because do you know what else there is to do in the transporter room when no one is going any place? Bloody well nothing, that's what. So, I started thinking up things I was going to cook later. And then sometimes things would work out and taste nice. And sometimes they didn't. So I started writing down what worked and what didn't. And then I thought, maybe I should write this all in some kind of book that others could have. You know, people who don't just use the replicator for everything. And here we are. I'm not sure what else should go in a cookbook introduction. Frankly, I don't guess this will be like some cookbooks out in the galaxy. I'd like to give you the stories that go with my recipes. You can skip all that if you're like, Eel, I don't bloody care what you was doing on a random star date and what exploded in your quarters. You can skip right past the story and get to the things to mix together to make this taste nice part, love. But, in case you're curious about the whole tale, I'd like to tell it. So get your data pad and a cup of tea and settle in to learn the stuff I've learned, mostly thanks to being bored and curious. Our first recipe is pot roast. Now I suppose I ought to start with pot roast, mostly because my crew on board the Starship Tempest likes this one. We've offered it to others as we've uh, come across them in our travels and I think it went over well. The first thing one must know about pot roast is that the main ingredient is an animal. That may seem downright, downright, it's hard to read your own writing, that may seem downright cruel to some, but I assure you it's a delicious and unfeeling creature. It's called a boss taurus on most planets, but the hilarious name cow on earth, I've been calling random crew members cows since I heard that, spilled your tea you cow. <laughs> anyway. These creatures seem to be pretty readily available on a lot of planets, so this is a meal that's quite easy to make after a stop off just about any place. Yes, you can replicate the meat of a boss taurus. It's called beef. But I'll tell you what, the replicator just can't quite make it taste the same. There's a savory aspect, a tenderness. Some people like there's a little more cooked, some a little less. Both are okay and neither will kill you unless you're a cow. Though the ones who like it almost black seem to think that any remaining pink will be the death of them. And it's their loss though because that takes all the tenderness out. However, there's one way to have this beef done all the way through but also tender. And that is what they call low and slow. If you have a good cut of cow and cook it at a low temperature for a longer time, it can retain some juiciness and still be tender and good. I am by no means an expert, but I found some fantastic advice in old Earth cookbooks. I wanted to make something that would be a real showstopper, something Captain Maddox and the bridge crew would be really impressed with. I took advice from some apparently famous Earth females, someone's named Bay Crocker and the Pioneer Woman, very mysterious, and then I tried some of my own ideas. I will tell you, adding Bajoran ale makes it a little spicy, but overall is not bad. The only crew member who really liked that one was Mr. Goodspeed, and I couldn't tell if he was just being polite. 
All right, you tell us how to make the thing, you're saying. I'm on it, I'm on it. Hold your britches. First, you should know that the other ingredients for this are plants and vegetables. I started growing some of my own down in the Arboretum. Dr. Teal found it recently, and she didn't seem to mind. I gave her some carrots and tomatoes, and she thought those tasted nice, so she didn't mention it to anyone. Maybe it's allowed on board again. After the giant sunflower incident with ants and bees, I thought I might get into trouble. Anyhow, you'll need carrots and potatoes, and those are vegetables. You'll also want some spices and seasonings. Those can either be grown and plants that you then chop the ends off of and cut up and eat, or or you can just replicate the spices because they're more or less the same. A basil is a basil, I've found. I guess it's time. Let's put this first recipe down. Eels pot roast recipe. Ingredients. One boneless boss taurus roast. This can be a chuck, rump, arm, shoulder or blade roast cut of cow about three to four pounds. Five or six medium-sized carrots cut into pieces, you can choose how big, or 12 baby ones. 10 or 11 small potatoes leave whole, or six large ones cut them into quarters after cooking. Salt and pepper, replicate these and don't use too much, maybe a teaspoon of each. And not like a spoon you use for tea time, I mean like a baking teaspoon. I have a whole set. Maybe I'll put images at the end of the cookbook so you know where everything is. I faffed about all confused at first myself. Two cups beef broth. You can make this by boiling down some boss taurus bones with some vegetables like onions, an acid like lemon, a good amount of salt and water. Or you can replicate it. One or two tablespoons of thyme and rosemary. You can grow these seasonings or replicate them directions. Heat your oven to 375 degrees. That is in Fahrenheit as many earth cookbooks I read for research were. If you'd like to use Celsius it's 190.6 degrees or 463.7 kelvins. In a large roasting pan place your cut of boss taurus. Pour the two cups of beef, beef broth into the pan all round and even on top of the meat. Put it into the oven uncovered and cook it for about an hour, about 60 minutes. Remove it from the oven and arrange your carrots and potatoes in the areas not full of cow. Sprinkle the whole lot with thyme, rosemary, pepper and salt. Cover the lot, put it back in the oven for two more hours, about 120 minutes. Then you can use a large fork and a knife to cut the center open and see if it's tender or a bit tough. If it feels tough, you can add some more broth, cover it, and give it another 20 minutes before you check it again. You ideally want the meat to kind of fall apart when you even approach it with a fork. This isn't a dish you ought to work at to enjoy. It cooks a long time in its own juices so that it's all tender and tastes nice without a lot of work cutting and such. Not to mention, it's chock-a-block with flavour. When you serve this... I've learned people don't like to hear about the cow itself or any of that. I assume that's why it's called pot roast, after the container and the cooking method, not slowly cooked boss taurus. I think the latter informs you better about what you're getting into, but that's just my opinion. When serving, put some of the meat, a few carrots, and at least one potato in each bowl. You can also use flour to turn the broth into a thicker thing called gravy but I made one once that resembled green algae paste, so I've just gone with the broth as a nice thin juice to coat everything with. You can also serve this with something called egg noodles, which were not as entertaining as I had hoped, and do not involve an egg cracking open to reveal noodles. However, they taste nice with the pot roast. You can replicate raw egg noodles and then boil them in some water until they're hot and soft. Don't boil them too long though, or again, green algae paste. Cooking is tricky. Tune in next time for the next episode of Lieutenant Eel's Cookbook. There will be episodes? Oh, I don't know. I thought this went well. And you promised me I could do a dessert, sugar. Oh, Ensign Doe, I didn't see you come in. Maybe we should ask the captain before making more plans? Right, sure thing. Anyway, thanks for listening. We'll see you out there.